In the winter of 2020, Root Dull Soul faced down the barrel of destruction. In addition, the entire world plunged into a collective fog, halting our journey. Despite the chaos these events have brought, with our technology partners, Sun Power and Galt Energy, we're ensuring that these difficulties turn into opportunities to be a better and more united solar community. We're proud to bring you this latest series from the specialist workshops of RRS Race Prep. Together, we're going to demonstrate our commitment to seeing a better tomorrow by engineering solutions to problems of the past and pushing the limits of what is possible. Welcome to Root Del Sol 2.0. Basically, today's job is to take these 12 volt motors that I purchased the other day and turn them into some sort of actuator that can lift the table up and down to the desired height, whether I want it to be a bed or whether I want it to be a table. So, basically, that's what my plan is today. And if you give me one second to get my overalls on, then I'll be ready to work. I love wearing overalls when I'm working. Okay, so the whole premise of this actuator build is to make something super cheap. If you look at actuators on the internet, prices are insane for how simple they actually are. For any actuator, you need something that spins. Some people use a manual crank, but I'm fancy and I decided that I would like to make mine electric using some cheap windshield wiper motors. I picked up at a junkyard for 100 pesos each or about 5 US dollars. Alright, so I got all of the motors here. As I said, they're all different sizes. You can see that just by looking at it um, I would say that these or these at least are very similar sized so they're probably going to operate at the same speed but we'll see hopefully they're the same so first I had to test all of them and make sure they all worked and which wiring configuration gave me the fastest speeds normally you'll find five wires coming out of a windshield wiper motor There'll be a negative wire and then a combination of other wires to add more or less power to the motor. I literally just used a 12 volt battery and held the wires on the positive or negative until I found the fastest combination. Nothing really technical about that. You can see the shaft ready. There it goes. And if I change that for this white one, it spins slower. See that? Slower. and faster. My first job was to try to couple a lead screw to the shaft of the motor. Normally you can buy couplers on the internet for this kind of thing, but they are expensive and I live in Mexico, so they're not so easy to get. So I decided that I'd make my own. So I had some cheap threaded rod that I had laying around. It was about 1 8 inch thick, and I first thought that maybe this would be sufficient for the purpose of the build. But I was wrong. After using some tubing and careful welding, I was able to get the shaft to spin, but the travel speed of the bolt was super slow. So the good news is, I don't know if you can see the screen very well, this one traveled at 23 seconds an inch, and this one traveled at 21 seconds an inch. So they're pretty close. But yeah, I guess this is what DIY does. It makes you have to just MacGyver things together and make them work because otherwise you have to go out and buy expensive things like actuators which cost you know hundreds and hundreds of dollars. I think we can make this work. I think what I need to do is I need to change these to Acme bolts. The Acme bolts will travel a lot quicker than these because they have a bigger thread. So I went back to the drawing board and found myself some Acme screws and travel bolts from one of my favorite stores here in Ensenada called Dornillos Alvarado. It was actually perfect. I had already welded a tube onto the shaft of the motor with an outside diameter of half an inch, which fit perfectly into another tube that I found in the workshop with an inside diameter of half an inch. The Acme screw was also half an inch, so bada boom, I had a motor with an extended shaft for about 300 pesos or around 15 US dollars. 
I was then able to solidify the whole system, but only after one more trip to Tornillos Alvarado to get some Tornillos Opresores. Or in Australian, we call them grub screws. All right, so the first thing I have to do tonight is weld these, I don't know if you can see it here, but these grub screws, these little screws into place here to hold down the shaft. It's so hard to show you that. To hold down the shaft of the, the motor and the, the Acme bolt that's gonna help you know, combine these together basically. It's a coupler and I need to be able to screw down on it so that this twists with the motor and this goes up with the uh, piece of metal. Anyway, it's so hard to explain. I'm just gonna show you what I'm doing, like always. So, I only just learned to weld since starting this project. I'd never really successfully welded something as small and precise as a tornillo opresor. But I always say you'll never learn if you don't try. So I practiced three or four times and failed a bunch, but then I got it. There it is. That's not going anywhere. I had myself a detachable shaft attached to the motor. Next, I had to create some sort of mounting plate for the motor and shaft. Excuse the poor filming here, but this is me mounting the motors to the plate. All I did was just drill a few holes and put a few bolts through the motor's original mounting points. Then, I needed to cut my square tube for my table legs. You could use any size tube you want, as long as you have two that fit firmly but smoothly inside of each other. For mine, the big one has an inside measurement of one inch, and obviously, the outside of the smaller one is also one inch. But I think the tubes are about 16 gauge steel, and they're about one inch and one and a quarter inch thick. I then welded end caps on a smaller tube. I drilled some holes in the center and welded the Acme bolts so the travel screw could travel through it freely. Keeping everything centered and straightening the welded bolt is key here. I welded the larger tube over the center of the motor and shaft, and I tried my best to get this exactly precise, as it is important in these DIY actuators. To take your time keeping everything centered and straight. Then I drilled an access hole so the tornillos or pressors could be loosened and the shaft could be removed without unscrewing the whole actuator. After that, I assembled the actuator ready for a test. At this time in the video, I'd like to interrupt by kindly telling you all to hit that freaking subscribe button at the bottom of the video. I'm so close to 10,000 subs and it would mean a whole lot to me to have your support for my project. All right, let's get back to the video. So the next job is to mount these actuators in place. I'm going to use some angle iron just to encapsulate them. If that makes any sense at all to you, I'm glad because it doesn't make so much sense to me. No, it makes a lot of sense to me in my head, but it's really hard to explain this. So once again, I'm just going to do it and you're going to see how it happens. So I welded some one and a half inch angle steel in place at the same width as the plate which I built my actuator on top of. I used some half inch rivet nuts to secure the actuator to their mounts. I thought about welding the whole thing together, but then realized the actuator needs to be removable in case I need to replace the motors or service the actuator units. It was then time to test the units in their place. This has got to be one of the best feelings ever when something you build actually works. Great success! To finish off, I cut the tubes to the desired height, ready to build my table slash bed on top of. But you'll have to wait until next week to see that video. So there you have it, an actuator built for less than 20 US dollars. Make sure you let me know in the comments section what you'd use an actuator like this for. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the future content that I'm releasing. Thanks for watching everybody, I'll see you next time.